Hey there! In this video I'm going to show you how to create your own Windows 7 Service Pack 2 installation media. Now Microsoft has never officially released Service Pack 2 for Windows 7 and that's a shame that they haven't done that. If you install a clean copy of Windows 7 um, after installation there are over 200 updates to be installed and it literally takes hours to download and install them. I've even had it take more than a day. Now if you're someone who installs Windows a lot or if you're an organization that installs Windows a lot, um, having an actual Service Pack 2 will save you a lot of time because you don't have to download all those updates after installing it. They're just already there. Now this is not a hack. Um, this actually uses the tools and techniques that Microsoft uses when they create official service packs. So you're just doing the work that Microsoft hasn't done yet. Now there's a couple of things that you're going to need to download. Um, first, you're going to need something called the Windows 7 Automated Installation Kit. Um, there's also the Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit. Now they renamed it. It's the same thing. They just changed the name. Um, doesn't matter which version you use. Uh, just be aware that it's a rather large download. It's 1.7 gigabytes, so it's going to take a while to download, but there are some tools in here that you're going to need. Um, you're also going to need WinISO. Um, if you download it, it's a free trial version. We'll just need this utility for one step later on. And you'll need the ability to mount an ISO image, and if you don't have a program to do that, I suggest using WinCDEMU. It's a free open source utility, really easy to use, works great. And now this procedure we're going to use, you can do it on a physical machine or you can do it on a virtual machine. I'm going to do it on VirtualBox. Um, if you have your own virtualizer that you prefer, you can use that. Or again, you can use physical machines. They both work. And then the last thing you need is the actual installation media for Windows. For most people, that'll probably be a Windows DVD. Um, I have the Windows 7 ISO image I downloaded directly from Microsoft here. Either one works. Now this will work with any version of Windows after Vista, or I should say Vista and later. So Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.1, Windows 10, they all work. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do Windows 7 Professional Service Pack 2 64-bit today. So that's what I'm going to walk through. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So the first step is to actually install Windows using your existing installation media. Now I said I'm going to do it virtually and I've already created a virtual machine here and I've set it so that it's using the ISO image when I start it up. So when I start this virtual machine it will boot off of that CD drive and start installing Windows 7 Service Pack 1. Now it's very important that you do this on a clean computer. Do not do this on your main computer because some of the steps we're going to do later on are destructive. So if you do this on your main computer, you will lose data. Um, that's what's nice about doing it on a virtual machine. Uh, there's no data to lose here. So go ahead and let it run through and install Windows 7. When you get to this part in Windows Setup, go ahead and create a user although the user and computer name don't matter we're gonna clean those up later on so just go ahead and create a temporary user for now and password doesn't matter and we'll skip the license key there's no reason to license this so after this you can go ahead and continue installation now that Windows 7 is installed uh, you can, if you want, you can make any customizations to the image. You can install programs, uninstall programs, make configurations. And then the main thing you want to do, uh, the bulk of the work here, is you want to run Windows Update, scan for any updates, install all the updates, and it's an iterative process. So after you install updates, reboot, scan again, there'll be more updates, install them, reboot, scan again. And you keep doing that over and over and over until all the updates are installed. And at that point, we'll be ready to continue with our next step. Well, now that the long process of update, reboot, update again, reboot again is complete, uh, we can get this machine ready. Uh, we basically need to run several tools on here to clean this and then we will image the machine 
And as far as cleaning it goes, um, I'm going to use two different tools. I've downloaded a free utility off the internet called C Cleaner, which I'm going to use. And then I'm also going to go in here and run the built-in Microsoft disk cleanup. So we'll come down here and just right-click, say Run as Administrator. And once this comes up, I'll select all the options and let it clean up the entire disk. And then I'll run the C Cleaner. And then after that, we'll be ready to um, image the machine. So the Microsoft Disk Cleanup and C Cleaner have completed. And so now we have one more cleanup step, and then we're ready to uh, prepare the machine for imaging. And what I'm going to do is come in here to uh, manage the computer, and I'm going to go into the user accounts. And temp is the user I created during initial setup, and that's the account we've used to do all the processing on this machine, and now we're going to delete it. So we're just going to right-click, say delete, and you know, you're going to get a bunch of prompts. Are you sure you want to do this? It's going to tell you you're currently logged in. Yes, you want to do it, and it's going to make sure you have another administrator account. You don't need to worry about any of this. Just do whatever you need to do to get that account gone. And now I've got an or a command prompt window here, run as administrator. And I've switched to the Windows System32 sysprep folder. And I'm going to run this command line, sysprep slash generalize slash shutdown slash OOBE and which that last part stands for out of box experience and this is a utility from Microsoft this is the steps we've done up until now we're just cleaning the machine taking off temporary files things like that but this one's going to do a more destructive clean on the system and it's going to prepare it for re-imaging so if the machine were licensed um, it's going to take all of that information out of there so the next time this computer boots it's going to be as if it's never been installed before and it's going to ask you for user accounts and things like that so this step right here is why you don't want to run it on your own personal computer you want to run it on a clean computer or a VM because this one's going to be destructive and also as it says here it's going to shut down when it's done so you just run this command and it'll clean everything up shut it down when it's done and then after that we'll be ready to image the machine well, now that the machine has completed the sysprep stage, uh, we're ready to image the machine. In order to create the image, you need to use what's called Windows PE. If you have a Windows PE bootable CD or thumb drive, now is the time to use it. Um, I realize most people don't have a bootable WinPE copy. Um, you can create one off the internet for free if you Google it, but it's a rather long, involved process. So if you don't have it, I'm going to show you how to do it without. Uh, what you can do is, so I've gone ahead and put the Windows 7 installation CD back into the drive and we're going to boot the computer up as if we're going to install Windows 7, although we're not actually going to install it. And once this loads up, I'll show you what we need to do. We're at the point where it thinks we're ready to install Windows 7, but we don't actually want to install Windows 7 instead we want a command line and if you press shift F10 it's going to open up a command window here now we need to run a tool on here called image X to create the image uh, the image X tool is located inside of that large download from Microsoft WAIK or recently renamed WADK so you need to get that image X tool here onto this computer and a couple different ways to do that probably the easiest way is to stick it on a thumb drive and then stick the thumb drive into this computer. Um, you can also go over the network. Uh, if you do want to go over the network, you'll probably find from this command window here there is no network access. So if you type WPE init and if you wait a few seconds after running that command, you'll have network access. So that's how you get files, transfer them over the network here. But we want to want to run ImageX and we also have one last uh, cleanup step before we're ready to go. So I'm going to go to the users folder and we had a user called temp and we deleted the user but it left the user folder behind with all the files so I'm going to go ahead and remove that folder and now we're ready to image this machine 
and first thing you want to do is you want to locate which drive it is it's probably not going to be the C drive because Windows creates uh, a s small boot partition in front so that's probably the C drive so you're probably going to find all your Windows files here on the D drive and it doesn't matter where it is and X is the this is the WinPE drive because we're actually running under WinPE right here and so this is where I've put image X for right now now the command line you want to do is image X slash verify slash capture slash compress space maximum and then you want to give it the root of what you're imaging so in this case we're we want to image the D drive now you want to tell it where to put it so we'll we'll just go back onto the D drive it doesn't matter and we're going to call it install.wim and then you need to give it a name so you could say like Windows and this command right here it's going to take a while to run but this is going to create an a file called install.wim after the image has been captured you need to copy it off of the machine and you can either do that over the network or probably the easiest thing is to stick in a thumb drive and copy the file onto there and so here I've got a copy of the install.wim at this point in time we're now done with the virtual machine or if you used a physical machine so we're done with that uh, what you need to do now is use a program that can mount an ISO image and go ahead and mount the original CD that you used to install Windows and then take all the files on there and copy it to your hard drive so here I've copied all the files to a folder I just called W7 and I put all the files in there and now you want to go into the sources folder and take this install to WIM and move it in there and there's going to be an existing file you want to overwrite that and now you so you'll find a file called ei.cfg you want to delete that file and then you might also find one or more uh, CLG files here and you want to delete these too. Now these files we're deleting here um, these kind of identify information about this install.wim and since we've replaced it with a new one these files are no longer valid they're not required which is why we don't have to replace them we can just delete them like that uh, now what we want to do is go ahead and image this we have one final step to do before we can create the final ISO file and what we need to do is this original Windows uh, DVD image here has a boot sector to it and we need to copy that boot sector so that we can use it on our new ISO image and to do that we'll use a program called WinISO I'm just using a freeware so I don't want to bother registering it and we're gonna open the original file and then once we've got it open you can come up here to bootable and say extract boot image and I'm just gonna save it to C colon backslash and it'll give it a BIFX extension so there we've extracted the boot sector and we're done with this program and now to actually create the ISO image we're going to use another tool located in that Microsoft SDK we downloaded uh, WAKE or WADK depending on which version you went with and the tool is called OSCDIMG and there's a lot of command line switches here <coughs> excuse me so dash U2 dash O dash H dash M dash B and then the path to that boot.bifx and now you want to do the folder where everything is stored and so for me that was c colon backslash w7 and the final parameter is the output iso file name so c colon backslash i'll just call it w7 sp2.iso and this utility it'll take a couple minutes to run but it's going to build up an iso image and once you have that ISO image you'll want to test it make sure it's working and once you've verified it works you can you know burn it onto a DVD and you now have a Windows 7 Service Pack 2 DVD 
that you can use whenever, wherever you want to install Windows 7 and save yourself a ton of time of having to download and install a ton of updates. So I know that was a rather long process, a lot of steps involved, but uh, hopefully you're able to follow them and I hope this helps you out. Thanks for watching.